Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 16 for chapter 3. We continue our discussion on non-homogeneous second order linear equations. In this video, we'll look at more complicated forms of the source term, which we call g. Let's begin with an example. So here's the example. We have the equation that is y double prime minus 3y prime minus 4y equal t times e to the t. Note the form of the source term. It's a, a new form which is a product of two functions, an exponential function and a term t, which is a polynomial. And the goal is to find a particular solution for this equation. OK, so let's formally recognize the term g and the, the form of g. So the term g here is a polynomial of degree 1 for this t here times a exponential function e to the at, where this a is 1. Okay, so P1 is polynomial of degree 1, and then this A is the rate for the exponential function. So as we have encountered previously, um, if the rate of the exponential function should match the root of the characteristic equation for the homogeneous equation, then we would expect some trouble and some additional treatment. So let's check the roots. So for this one, um, the characteristic polynomial is r squared minus 3r minus 4 equals 0. And uh, we can quickly find two roots. r1 is minus 1 and r2 is 4. And then we see that a is 1, so it does not match i1 um, and it does not match r2. So the a is not a root for the characteristic polynomial. Okay, so in this case, um, we can try um, to find a particular solution um, with the same form as g, as we have been doing. So what is the form of g? Well, recall the form of g is polynomial of degree 1 and multiplied by exponential function. So let's fit in that. The polynomial of degree 1, so we call it capital A T plus B, where A and B are two coefficients to be determined, multiply by E to the T, because A T and A is 1 here. Now let's check if this form will work. Okay, so we will, as we have known by now, we will um, plug in this capital Y into the non-homogeneous equation and find constraints for the coefficients a and b. Okay? And then for this to work, we will need to prepare ourselves um, to get the derivatives y prime. And it's a product rule you can apply. You can um, multiply and, and differentiate this term first, and you get a, e, t. And then um, you keep this term, and you differentiate that. Okay, and then you get um, a, b, t, and you can um, combine the like terms of the t, e to the t, then you'll get a term a and a term b. Okay, and then there will be a term that is t times um, e to the t, which is here. And then um, you can differentiate y prime one more time and uh, some calculation, some um, um, product rule applied here, and you reach this expression after collecting like terms. So for e to the t, you get 2a plus b, and then for t times e to the t, you get a in the front. Okay, and then the next step is to plug in these three terms in here for these y's. OK, so now um, we plugged in. Let's plug into the left hand side of the equation. And then here is y double prime minus 3 times y prime 
minus 4 times y. Okay, so it looks a little bit big, but um, it's okay. We can collect like terms and we see that there are um, actually two types of terms here. One type is some constant times et, and the other type is t times et and with some constants in the front. Okay, and we collect them separately. So um, first for the e to the t term, we have 2a plus b coming from here. And then here um, we have, um, this is capital B, um, a plus b, negative 3. And then for the last one, we get negative 4b. Okay, Adding up the coefficients, we'll get negative a, um, minus 6 capital B. And then the second type of uh, um, function is uh, t to the et. We'll get a here, and then this term we get negative 3a, and then we have this term, negative 4a, so it becomes negative 6a t e to the t. So we can write this like this, negative 6a t, because we take the e to the t out together, and that's the constant in front of e to the t. Okay, and then this expression must equal to the right-hand side, which is t to the et. So the part we um, highlighted in red, um, which I'm blocking in blue here, that's the equation of constraint um, for the constants a and b. Okay, so since the exponential term is never zero, we can um, drop it, and then we have the condition that um, this term here must equal to t. Okay, so we can compare coefficients. So for the coefficients for the term t, I get negative 6a, and that must equal to 1 because it's 1 here. And then the second one is the constant term here must be zero. So um, two unknowns and two equations, which can be easily solved because a is solved by the first one, negative one sixth, and you plug a in here and you quickly find the b. So b is one over 36. Okay, so we found a, a constant, uh, a pair of constants a and b, which will make this form a particular solution. So we can plug it in and write out the particular solution is negative 1/6t plus 1 over 36 in bracket that is the polynomial times e to the t so let's summarize what we have found in this example so in this example we have found that if the form of g is a polynomial times an exponential to the rate at in the case where the rate a is not a root of the characteristic equation, then the particular solution would take the same form as g, that is, a polynomial times an exponential function. So this approach in general works if the a is not a root, um, but um, it could happen that this a becomes a root, then the g, um, the form of the g will contain terms that is a, a homogeneous equation, and then it won't work. In that case, um, we can simply multiply that form by an additional t, as we have done so many times before, and that would work. Okay, so here um, I will take a um, brief example. Um, the same left hand side and the right hand side I changed the exponential function into e to the negative t and we need to find a particular solution. So um, what will be the form of the particular solution? So note that and the rate a here is negative 1 and we know from the previous example that this equal to one of the root, r1. Therefore, 
the form we used in the previous example will not work. Okay. So the reason why is that it, it would match the um, homogeneous solution. You can go ahead and try it and be confirmed. And you can pause this video if you like to work that out. Okay, so now let's try a new form. And that is, um, we multiply the old form we would have guessed by another t. So I get t times a t plus b e to the negative t. Okay, okay, so let me distribute the t in to get a t squared plus b t e to the negative t. And then you go over the same procedure as uh, the previous example. So I'll be a bit brief. So you differentiate this function and product rule collect like terms and you get this function as the derivative. Then you compute the second derivative. Some calculation is needed and to differentiate this by product rule and collect like terms and then you get the second derivative. We've done this many times, so I will not write out the details. And now we plug it into the equation. So we'll have um, y double prime minus 3, that's y prime, minus 4, that's y. Okay, And again, we can collect the like terms, and um, this big expression can be reduced into this expression. And then we know this must equal to t to the e um, to the negative t here. OK, so comparing um, the left and right hand side, we see we can drop e to the negative t. And then we get this um, equation that must be satisfied for the polynomial. OK, and compare the coefficients, then we see that this coefficient in front of t must be 1, and this constant must be 0, which can be easily solved. a is directly solved, and plug a in, and you solve for b. OK, and now we can um, plug this into the form of the particular solution, and we have found a particular solution which is, uh, this is the value a, and this is the value b. OK, so we see that um, the trick of multiplying the form by a t works again here in this case. OK, so let's do a summary. Um, this is summary number four. That's for the case where the function g is a polynomial of degree n times an exponential function with rate a here. Okay, so pn is a polynomial of degree n, so we write out its general form where all these alphas are given. Then um, the form of a particular solution will depend on the roots r1 and r2 of the characteristic equation. Okay, to um, simplify notation, let's um, denote a polynomial p tilde n to be a polynomial of degree n to be fitted. So these will have coefficient capital A i, so capital A and t n plus all the way to capital A 1 t plus capital A naught. So these a's are the variable, um, the undetermined coefficients. OK, and then we have um, three cases. Um, let's discuss them, list that in the summary. So the first case is the uh, lucky case, where A does not match any of the root R1 or R2. So they are both not equal to A. And then the particular solution form will be the same as G. That is, you fit in this P tilde which is a polynomial of degree n times e to the a t. Okay, that's the first example we took. The second one would be um, the case that um, a matches one of the root. So let's say 
A equals either to R1 or to R2, but R1 and R2 are distinct. Then um, this form doesn't work. The form that works is uh, take this form and multiply it by a T. Okay? This is the second example we had in this video. There is a third case which um, we did not go through any example, which I'll just state here. That is the case where R1 and R2 are equal to each other. So you have a double root and it matches the constant A. And then we know this form wouldn't even work because that would match also the um, homogeneous solution. So what you need to do is multiply this by another t. So you will actually get t squared times um, p tilde and the polynomial to fit in times the exponential function. Okay, so um, if you would like to take it as an exercise or as a challenge, I um, recommend you to um, set up an example for yourself where the two roots are the same and matches the A and then put in this form and to be confirmed that it works well here. Okay, so um, that is all I want to say for this case where the source term is a polynomial times an exponential function. We still have a few more cases to consider which will come in the following videos. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.